Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Rangarao Karanam. Welcome back. In this video, we would be talking about dynamic or auto scaling. What is auto scaling and why do we need it in our microservices architectures? Before we talk about auto scaling, let's understand why applications have different amounts of loads at different times. Let's consider a shopping application like Amazon. Amazon has varying amount of loads in different months. During the shopping period or during the Thanksgiving time, Amazon might have huge amount of load. It might have 10 times, 20 times the normal load. However, during the, let's say the major sports events like Super Bowl, the amount of load will be much, much lesser. So we have varying amount of load, sometimes 10 times, 20 times the usual load. And sometimes there is less load than usual. Now, how do these applications work? These applications need infrastructure. The infrastructure to support 10x the load is maybe 10 times the infrastructure which is needed to support 1x the load. Now, what would happen if I have static infrastructure in place? I would need to have the infrastructure to support peak load. Let's say I have that infrastructure in place to support the peak load. What would it be doing when I have less load? It would just be sitting idle. It would be wasted, right? So for major parts of the year, that infrastructure is sitting there idle without being used. Is that good? The answer is no. It's not good that infrastructure is sitting there idle. And that's where cloud comes into picture. All these cloud providers say, why do you want to have the infrastructure sitting idle? Why don't you design your applications in such a way that when there is high load, you have more instances of the application. And when there is less, less load, there are less number of instances of these applications. And that's where microservices architecture started getting popular. Designing things with microservices architectures enable you to auto scale when there is more load and also decrease the amount of instances when there is less amount of load. So let's take a simple example. Let's say we have two services talking to each other, currency conversion service and a Forex service. The Forex service, let's say it handles the request to say how much is a USD worth in terms of INR? Or how much is a EUR worth in terms of INR? And the currency conversion service does a little more than that. It can take a bag of currencies and a few amounts and convert them into a specific currency of your choice. It can say, I want 10 euros and 25 USDs. What is the total worth in terms of rupees? So let's say that's the logic which the currency conversion service is handling. The Forex service receives requests not only from the currency conversion service, but a number of other services as well. Based on the load of these services, there might be different number of instances of the currency conversion service and the Forex service. So there might be two instances of the currency conversion service, but five instances of the Forex service. What we want to do when we talk about auto scaling is if the load on currency conversion service is less, there would just be two instances. If the load on forex service is very very high then there might be 50 instances so what we would want to happen is the load which is the calls which are coming from the currency conversion service to the two instances i would want to distribute them between the 50 instances of the forex service that's what we would want to be able to do when we implement auto scaling in a proper way that's the requirement we would want the load or the calls coming from a specific service distributed among all the available instances of another service. We would want to be able to dynamically scale the number of instances of a specific service based on the number of calls it's receiving, based on the load on it. So those are the two important requirements when we talk about auto scaling. Now, how can you implement that? Let's discuss that right now. There are two important components that help us to implement auto scaling. The first one is something called a naming server. 
a naming server is something where all instances register with. So, if I have a new instance of a forex service coming up, it would register with the naming server. A uh, new instance of the currency conversion service coming up, it would register with the Eureka naming server. The other thing which a naming server would also be able to do is to tell what are the places where a specific microservice is deployed. So, the currency conversion service will ask the naming server, okay, I need to find out where are all the instances of forex services. So, it would get back a message from the naming server saying, okay, at this instance, there are six instances of forex service running and these six instances are running at these addresses. So, what naming servers enable is something called location transparency. Every instance of any microservice would register with the naming service and any other microservice which needs to talk to it will ask the naming server, hey, what is the address of this specific microservice? How many instances are running at this point in time? And that's what naming servers enable. Now, the currency conversion service knows that there are five instances of the forex service. How does it know? Because it asks the naming server. Once it asks the naming server, it knows there are five instances running. Now, how does it distribute the load among all these? That's where a load balancer comes into picture. One of the typical load balancing frameworks, which is a client-side load balancing framework, is Ribbon. So, until now, what we have discussed is the fact that we would want the currency conversion service to talk to the forex service and we would want to be able to dynamically scale up and scale down the number of instances of these service so at specific times there might be just two instances of the currency conversion service and there might be five instances of the forex service and we would want to be able to dynamically distribute the load among all available instances so the important questions that we talked about are how does the currency conversion service know how many instances of forex service are active we said the answer to that is a naming server. The naming server will help us find out how many instances of the forex service are active. So the currency conversion service sends a request to the naming service and it gets where all the forex service is available. The second question is how does the currency conversion service distribute the load among the active instances? The answer to that we said is ribbon. So ribbon helps us to distribute the load. So a load balancer is what we need to distribute the load among the active instances. So, typically, this is how things would work. So, as soon as the instance comes up, what would happen is it would register with Eureka. So, any instance of currency conversion service or a forex service would register with Eureka. So, with the naming server. And when a specific thing, like let's say the currency conversion service, needs to find out what is the URL of the Forex service, the currency conversion service would ask Eureka, okay, give me the instances of the Forex service. And the Eureka responds back saying, here are the two URLs, FS instance 1, FS instance 2. And Ribbon is what is present, Ribbon is a client balancing, client side load balancing framework. So on the currency conversion service, it would use Ribbon and it would round robin among the active instances. So one call would go to FS instance one, FS instance one as well. Ribbon supports a wide variety of other algorithms as well, but round robin is kind of the basic one. So this is how auto scaling is implemented. So what would happen when a new instance comes up? So when a new instance comes up, when there's a FS instance three coming up, what would happen? It would register with Eureka. And when a currency conversion service talks to Eureka, it receives three instances of forex service back and ribbon would distribute load among those three instances so this would keep on going forever so this is kind of the basic infrastructure that you would need to support auto scaling we are talking about naming server and a load distributor so a, a combination of load distribution as well as a location transparency are needed to implement auto scaling now there is one question we did not really talk about until now. How do you make the decision that a new instance has to be brought in or an existing instance has to be killed? How do you know that there is more load or less load? That's where application monitoring, containerization and Kubernetes come into picture. For any application, 
you need to monitor it to find out how much load it has. An application has to expose metrics which enable us to track, okay, this application is being overloaded. This application instance is being overloaded. Kubernetes can manage containers. So if you actually create a Docker image containing the application and create containers around them, what you can do is you can have Kubernetes bring instances of that container up, monitor the load on it and implement auto scaling. So Kubernetes can look at what are the instances available, what is the load on them and it can auto scale dynamically up and down. In this video, we talked about auto scaling. Why do you need auto scaling? Because load keeps varying because you don't want infrastructure sitting idle. We talked about how you can implement auto scaling in a microservices architecture. We said at the basic thing, whenever a new instance comes up or whenever an instance goes down, you would want to be able to recognize that and you'd want to be able to distribute the load among the active instances. You can achieve that by location transparency, by using something called a naming server like Eureka and having a load distribution. Whether you are going for a server-side load distribution or a client-side load distribution using something like Ribbon is one of the important decisions you'd need to make. So a combination of load balancing and a naming server would help us recognize the fact that an instance is up or down and react accordingly. Now, one of the important things is based on the load, you'd want to be able to increase the number of instances or decrease the number of instances. And that's where containerization and Kubernetes come into picture. If you have a lot of containers that are being managed by Kubernetes, Kubernetes can monitor the load on them if you provide the right data to it and it can react. So it can bring up new instances, new containers, or it can kill existing instances. That's how the entire auto scaling is implemented. The idea behind this video was to just give you a big picture of the whole thing. It was not to really get into the details of Kubernetes or Docker or any of that stuff, but give you an idea at a high level about what is auto scaling, what are the different components that are typically involved in microservices architectures to be able to do auto scaling. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.